What is going on, investors? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. It is time to talk about MasterCard Incorporated, ticker symbol MA. The company just reported their Q4 earnings, and we'll get into them. We'll take a look at this revenue. Take a look at this revenue growth. I'm really liking that. Talk about some management comments on cross-border spending. As we know, with the payment processors like MasterCard and Visa, they develop and they get a lot of profits from cross-border. So you go travel abroad, an American travels to Europe, a European travels here to the United States, and they spend money using their credit card. Extremely lucrative business. It's interesting to see how that business has come back given the whole health situation and the travel restrictions that have been in place for nearly two years now. And we'll get into these financials. Take a look at these from a high level. We'll look at the balance sheet, the profits, the cash flows, and then we'll come over here to it from a technical perspective and look at MasterCard as well. Some pretty simple stuff going on with MasterCard. And I think we can identify some areas where you can buy this stock in the shorter term. Let's kick things off with the Q4 earnings. They came in at $5.2 billion. We'll show those to you on the financials, $5.2 billion for the quarter. And we'll also show it to you on a yearly basis since this was the Q4 numbers. That was revenue growth of 26% year over year. So put that in your speculative stock portfolio and keep that in mind that a company like MasterCard with a $332 billion market market cap. Now, I know this stock is not necessarily considered a value stock. It's got a forward PE of close to 40. That might have shrunk a little bit because this probably doesn't include today's earnings. That probably exceeded expectations by somewhat over at MasterCard, but you got about a 40 forward PE on this one. I know it's not necessarily a value stock, but you do get a dividend, $1.96 per share. We'll see what that equates to on the earnings side here. See if we've got room to grow that dividend, just like we've got over at Vista and some of these other dividend growers. You better believe over at MasterCard, card that dividend has room to grow as well but look, strong growth rate on this one. So you are going to have to pay a premium or you typically have to pay a premium for that type of growth. Now, what management did say on the call, or at least in the press release, was that Q4 cross-border spending is now above pre-pandemic levels. So that's interesting because there's still some restrictions. And even if there's not a restriction, there's some people that probably don't want to travel or don't, don't feel like it, uh, at least at the current time. And so if that continues to loosen up in the coming months and quarters ahead, Certainly great for the economy, but more specifically for MasterCard as well. Let's get over to these financials. We've got MasterCard coming in at that $5.2 billion like we talked about. But what I thought was really nice about MasterCard's quarter is they actually kept these total operating expenses very much in check. Okay, they've got this G&A expense, which went from $1.6 billion up to $1.86 billion. Everything else stayed relatively flat. We went from $2 billion on the cost side up to about $2.4 billion. But look at how much we grew grew our revenues. We went from 4.1 up to 5.2. So we grew our revenues by 1.1 billion. And we only, and I say only, grew our operating expenses by about 320 million or so. That gives us obviously absolutely fantastic operating income. We went from $2 billion in operating income last year. Now we're all the way up to $2.8 billion. You see for the last 12 months, paints a very similar story, although it, it paints that this quarter was really good. Okay, you had $5.2 billion in revenue in a quarter, times this by four to get a kind of a full year amount, and you're over $20 billion. Now, look, I understand the fourth quarter is a lot of holiday travel. There's a lot of holiday spending. The fourth quarter tends to likely be MasterCard's best quarter, but it's just showing you the growth that we had in this quarter, certainly over last year as well. You were sitting at $4.1 billion. I love what I'm seeing. Not not only from a MasterCard perspective, but from just a broader economy perspective, because if MasterCard wasn't doing well, well, it's showing you that consumers and spenders are probably not doing well, and we should probably be worried about the economy. If MasterCard's revenue growth over the last year is any indication of the economy and the consumer, well, it looks like they're doing pretty darn good. Take a look at our operating income over the last year. We went from $8 billion up to this $10 billion. Now, you pay some interest taxes. You have some interest expense since you got a little bit of debt, which will show you, you come down here on a diluted earnings per share, just in a quarterly basis, you earn $2.41. That's in a quarter. For the full year, you earn $8.76 per share. And I will remind you, we only pay our shareholders. I say only, but look, we pay a shareholders $1.96 and we earned $8.76. This is a company that could grow that dividend. They could double the dividend, quite frankly. Not, I'm not necessarily saying they're going to do that. In fact, I'd be shocked if they did, but they could do 
it. And this company would actually be doing just fine from an earnings per share basis. Now, in terms of our balance sheet, we had about 10.6 billion in cash. Now it looks like we've got about 7.9. So some cash bled out of the business. I'm going to show you. So look, the reason why we always bring up the financials is this is the first thing I think you should do when you analyze a company. And so when you see cash go down, your question is now, well, look, they just printed a quarter that was fantastic on the operating side. And even on the net income side, you come all the way down to net income. The last year and the last quarter was absolutely fantastic, but might not even be getting better than that for MasterCard. But look, cash actually bled through the company. So your question should be, where did it go? Okay, so we see total current assets actually went down, but then we come down here to total assets because that includes assets that are not necessarily what they consider current or shorter term. You went from 33 up to 37 and you look here for discrepancies and you see here on Goodwill, you went from 4.9 up to 7.6. That means that MasterCard closed on an acquisition more than likely in the quarter because that line item tends to get added to Goodwill. We'll show it to you as well on the cash flow statement. That's the other place where you can determine where cash flows. In fact, it's probably even better determination of that. Long-term debt went from 12 12 to 13. So it looks like maybe they used a little bit of cash and a little bit of debt in order to finance those acquisitions that they made. They've got some other current liabilities here that ticked up just slightly, all things being considered with the strong earnings that this company has and given where interest rates are and still are. Well, look, borrowing money, no big deal over at MasterCard. Now, in terms of our cash flows, we pulled down this net income number of 8.6 billion. Look, it's way better than last year at six. 6.4 billion. Oh my gosh, I love this. We get to add back in things, to subtract some things. We come down here to net cash provided by our operating activities. Strong, 9.4 billion. That's 2.2 billion higher than last year. That's really, really strong. And it allowed them to do an acquisition of business net of cash acquired at $4.4 billion. So they used a, a lot of this free cash provided by the business to actually make an acquisition. I like that, okay? A company that has this much in retained earnings. They're not giving it to you a lot as a shareholder. So I don't mind that they're continuing to try to grow the business. I would not want to see this cash just sitting on the balance sheet depreciating as inflation continues to rise. Well, I like the fact that they're going out and spending some of that cash. I really appreciate that. We've got purchase of treasury stock. We've got dividend paid. We've got a proceeds of debt. Here's that debt we talked about that rolled onto the long-term debt side. Everything else looks about what you'd expect over at Master card. Now, from a technical perspective, we're basically range bound on this one. The lower end of the range is down here at $325 per share. The top end of the range is $391. If you're super bullish on MasterCard and you just want to see your MasterCard shares go up, well, they got to get above about probably over $400 per share. You need to put a big green candle up above $400 per share, and that would be a very, very bullish sign because all of a sudden you would take out the previous highs here, and all of a sudden you could see a run like NVIDIA made, Google made, Apple made. A lot of these stocks have broken to the upside over the last couple of months. And you saw once they did, they ran 20, 30%. Now, the other probability is we come up to this level because the stock right now is about 350. It's actually right in the middle of this range. I don't, look, I don't necessarily have an opinion on buying stocks in the middle of the range or not, but what I would do is actually wait until you got, see if you get to the top up here at 390, because look, I'd actually like to play the breakout on this one. You get above $400 per share. I wouldn't mind playing that breakout, setting a stop loss some, somewhere underneath this 390 level and seeing if you can have an NVIDIA type breakout, an Apple type breakout, a Facebook type breakout. Now, the other scenario, is we walk back up to 380, 390, we lose momentum and we come back down here towards the bottom end of the range. Anything south of 340 on this one, I think you can pick up here and buy, especially in a longer term portfolio. You're buying this for the dividend growth, understanding that you're paying a premium, but this company is delivering. And if you got your fingers crossed and you think cross-border travel will continue to open up, well, I'll tell you what, there's not many other companies out there that will benefit as much as MasterCard. That was today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that one. Good luck with your investments.